is the position. لِيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ وَتَكُونُ شُهَدَاء عَلَى النَّاسِ فَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ So establish salah and zakah وَعَتَصِبُوا بِاللَّهِ and cling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hold fast to Him. هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ He is your protector. فَنَيْمَ الْمَوْلَى How good a protector He is. فَنَيْمَ النَّسِيرِ How fine a helper He is. Now we come to the next surah, Al-Mu'minun. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The first section of this surah, rather half of it, is also one of the most important lessons of that selected course of study. It gives us the foundations on which the character of a true Mu'min can be built. We have to build the character. Unless we have the character of Mu'mineen, we won't be able to work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We won't be able to, to make jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, the individual character has to be on that pattern. What are the foundations on which this building of character or seerah of a true mu'min can be built? But of lahal mu'minun, verily, the believers have already attained salvation. Very good news. Who are those believers? الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Who humble in their prayers. When they are praying, they are very humble. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُورِدُونَ And those who keep away from vain things, useless things, what we call past times. Why? This time is very precious. Either it should be spent so that some need of this world is fulfilled. Need, real need. Or this time should be spent to earn something, some reward for the hereafter. Not to waste. To pass time is not a problem. This is the most precious capital we have. We have the only capital in this time that we have. Whatever we can make for the hereafter is in this time. So we can't waste it in vain things. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِزَّكَاتِ فَعِلُونَ And those who keep on doing zakat, because this is, this surah revealed in early Makki period. So zakat here doesn't mean the institutional zakat, that is one of the pillars of Islam, but the process of zakat. Continually giving away alms to the needy, to the poor. This is continuous process of purification of yourselves and your wealth. If you have given the due of the poor, then your, your wealth is now pure. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لَفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ and those who guard their private parts, their sexual urge, they control it. Illa Allah's wajihim. Except in regard to their wives, au ma malakat aymanhum. Or those whom their right hands possess, the concubines. Only two. Here, fainnahum gairu malumin. In this case, they are not blameworthy. Sex is not an evil in itself. It's only evil when some unlicensed, unpermitted way you adopt. Otherwise, with your wife, with your concubines, it's okay. No blame. It's not evil. It's not bad. It's a normal requirement of nature. It's a normal requirement of society. Just as you want to preserve yourself, you want to preserve your species. And this is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed. But whosoever exceeds from there, wife and concubines, and then he exceeds, goes somewhere else. That is adultery. Then they are the transgressors. And those who keep their trust and covenants, guard them, whatever promise they have made, whatever amana, trust, they have been trusted with something, they guard them. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ Those who guard over their prayers at proper time, with proper, you know, method, establish in congregation, offering namaz, offering salah in congregation, 
such people will be the inheritors. Inheritors of what? Allazina ya Rasul al firdaus who will inherit the gardens of paradise. Hum fiha khalidun and they will live in them forever, forever. Now comes these ayat which in the first section of Surah Al-Hajj also. Inna khalakna go min turabin summa min nutfatin summa min alaqatin summa min mudgatin mukhalaqatin wa ghaira mukhalaqatin This process, this embryonic process, the process of embryology and this is the most important place in Quran for the description of these stages of evolution of a human fetus. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ تِينَ And we have created man out of the extract of mud. The mud is extract. Whatever we eat, where from is it coming? From the mud. So, we, this is the extract of the mud that is giving us power, strength, energy. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينَ Then the next stage was we put him as a sperm drop in the safe lodging of the wall of the womb of the mother. Now it is there for some time. Summa khalakna nutfata alakatan. Then we create from this nutfa alaka. Now this word had been translated till this time as a clot. But there is no basis of this translation. Alaka. Alaka is something which is muallak, hanging, muallak ho jana, hanging. Because now the next stage is that it is attached to the wall of the womb of the mother, just as a leech, hanging. This is alaka. This is the third stage. That is why, you know, these embryologists in Toronto University, and they wrote it, that these stages, as they are described in Quran, wonderful. You could never see, imagine that 1400 years ago when there was no microscope, no dissections, how this description had been able. Dr. Keith L. Moore, his textbook on embryology is read all the world over and he says this. Summa khalakna nutfata alakatan fa khalakna alakata mudgatan. And then this alaka, we create out of it a lump of flesh. For Khalaqna al-Mudgata izaman, from this lump of flesh, we create bones. For Kasar al-Izaman al-Ahma, and then we clothe these bones with flesh, with muscles. Summa anshanahu khalqan akhir. And then we raise him to another creature.